All right, you guys, so I'm now home. That's today's session done. I'll break this into stages, you could say. The first can be my me, 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 where we talk about me, we talk about the session that I just did. And then as I bridge to the why, well then we'll start to look at how you could do this session, sessions like this and, and why it's important to run at race pace. If it doesn't already seem obvious, we'll discuss why that's important and then how you can kind of almost cheat when it comes to the rep length and recovery time that you can still run at race pace but perhaps still achieve the goal of whatever you know perhaps intensity that you wanted to work that day maybe it was threshold maybe it was tempo maybe it was vo2 max etc at different phases of the build-up you'll be able to do different types of training in terms of rep length and recovery time to hit different intensities but we're, we're going to get into that but right after i you know got to the track and i did my warm-up it looked like the nicest day ever and then the heavens opened it kind of got stormy it, it even dare i say or complain about it got a little bit windy <laughs> um so I didn't get to record the full warm-up, but I'll still be able to show you little bits of it, or, or I might have already shown you little bits of it. Um, but it's, a, it's the normal warm-up that I usually do, going through those stretches, some dynamic drills, A skips, B skips, band work, just getting the body primed, if you want to say, to be ready to begin the session. So the session went well from a... I executed it really well. In other words, I was able to do 10 by K with 30 seconds rest and I probably averaged between 303 and 304. So that's kind of like perfect execution, but I'm not delighted with how the effort felt. And in, instead of moaning, because today's video is about specificity. So instead of moaning, I'm going to do a tiny moan where I'm getting a little bit fed up with altitude training and what happens when you come back day x after altitude jet lag this is a piece of advice if you're going to add any intervention into your current life or training right you want to be better in four weeks time and so over the next four weeks you're gonna sleep better eat better um you know add some gym into your program add some speed into your program add some more mileage, add some cross training, go warm weather training, add in a sauna, add in ice baths. These are all little interventions, as you would call it, to hopefully in a month's time, two months time, having tried this intervention, whatever it may be, you want to be in a better place. I'm really starting to get annoyed with altitude that every time I come back from altitude, I'm like beating my head against the wall. Why my heart rate higher? I'm slower than I was at like 7,000 feet. You know, 10 mile run yesterday, <clears throat> six minute mile pace, average heart rate, maybe 154. Literally 11 days ago at 7,000 feet in a pretty, you know, sort of tough loop at, at altitude in Buffalo Park, 148 average heart rate. It's like, what, like, what is going on? It's really starting to get in my tits. But that's my tiny little rant. I, I'm only going to say, if you're adding in an intervention because you want to be better, you have to think to yourself, if I didn't add that in and I trained as normal or I did the same training that I did at altitude here at sea level in four weeks time, would I have been better off with or without that intervention? That's you must think about that logically when you're making decisions, okay? So anything you're going to add in, the purpose is to get you to a better place. If I didn't go to altitude, I would have probably felt better this morning in that 10 by K, possibly would have had a lower heart rate, possibly the effort would have felt easier. Now, I hope that because it's this silly day nine post altitude and apparently between day seven and 14, you don't feel very good. I hope, 
next week I feel better but in terms of how I executed today I nailed the splits I did this perfect sort of like pacing job where they were all very consistent and it was a job well done <clears throat> I didn't care that I was in this weird period after altitude it's annoying that I've just got over the jet lag and now I'm kind of dealing with the you know the flop they call it sort of post altitude like don't race between day 7 and 14 but I've got over the travel I'm feeling better but yeah maybe next week I'll be a bit quicker it didn't matter today because the goal for today was just to start running at race pace and that is my next movement in this video so without a doubt it's very very important in any build up for any race 5k 10k half marathon marathon that throughout the entire build up you're you're running at race pace because the body definitely gets comfortable at pace at paces that you practice so let's say you're training for a 5k well at the beginning of that build up you might even just start with 200 meters 400 meters okay and then as the build up gets you know further into its completion by week five by week six by week seven well then of course you can progress to 600 800 1k in the marathon i'm happy to start with like literally today's like k reps which you know that's 42 of those is the marathon but because i didn't want the intensity of today to be you know too hard well then starting with k reps was fine you can easily think about it that that could progress to mile reps 2k reps 3k reps 4k reps 5k reps 10 mile in one go half marathon race but in other words at least in the early stages even if the fitness isn't there yet as in the effort it took me to run 1k today there is no way on this earth that my fitness is at a place that I could handle that for a marathon but it still got my body used to the the rhythm the cadence and and the movement that it's going to have to go to in the next marathon so that's where I think it's super important even from like week one even if your fitness isn't in the place that it normally is even if you know on week 10 you're going to try to break a three-hour marathon but on week one you can only do 400 meter reps at marathon effort still well worth banking let's say 10k worth of minute intervals or or you know 400 meter reps at the pace you'd like to run the race at how you then progress it over those next lot of weeks is that you increase the length of the repetition 600 800 1k 2k etc perhaps all the way up to 5k 6k 7k and you hope that if you're training the right way and you're following a good program well then you hope that the fitness and the physiology and your psychology develops with you at a good pace and so what you might find is by week five or six you might find 2k reps 3k reps easier than you were finding perhaps the 400s or the 600s or the 800s on week one because things have had a chance to develop and you've given the body a chance to catch up to the speed you could say it's super super important how you can manipulate um, rep length and recovery time is really simple I could already today I had 30 seconds recovery okay not a lot I could already take a minute and I would bring the effort level down substantially so instead of being at 167 heart rate 168 you'd probably see it down at 162 163 just by doubling the recovery time then what I could have done is made the rep even shorter 600 meter rep for example and again the heart rate and the effort wouldn't have really had a chance to get up to where it was so a little bit easier so you can do a shorter rep length with slightly longer recovery or you can increase the, the the rep volume instead of 1k I could have gone to 2k's and then you can maybe keep the 30 seconds rest or you could move the 30 seconds rest to a minute I could have quite comfortably gone to the track today I could have done 2k at 305 and I could have taken 90 seconds to two minutes rest and the intensity and the effort level would have felt the same as the k's you see what I'm doing 
If you're gonna add volume in terms of length and you want to make the intensity easier, well then increase recovery time. If you're trying to keep the intensity, you know, the same, or you want to make it harder, well then you're looking at bringing the, either you're looking at bringing the, the recovery time down, or you want to speed the rep up. But if you're trying to run at race pace and you're trying to bank time at race pace, well you're not going to increase the pace. So what you're going to do is either make the rep longer or the recovery shorter. That way you're going to, let's say I did 2Ks and I took 30 seconds. Once I got to 1200 a mile, I would have been working much harder because I could tell I was already getting to a place I wasn't loving life. And so with another 400, with another 400, it's going to increase that intensity. The heart rate's going to go higher, the, the effort's going to go up. And then I'm not taking the recovery time to bring that effort back down. So that's how you're going to start manipulating recovery and rep length to achieve whatever intensity you wanted for that day. And try to keep it consistent throughout the session. So if you want threshold, keep it at threshold. If you need to move the recovery a little bit, move the recovery a little bit. If you need to decrease the length of the rep to keep it at threshold, do that. But keep the pace exactly where it's supposed to be. But move these areas around to make sure that you can keep running at race pace, but hopefully hit whatever intensity you plan to hit that day. VO2 max, aerobic power, threshold, etc. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful to, you know, find out why race pace might help. Way more tips on the website. I've said it enough times, but if you want to check that out, joggingroom.com, 60 lectures, 12 hours of tips, training plans. If you don't want to have to try to calculate all this stuff with rep length and recovery times and you know how you want your plan to develop, check out some of the plans on the website. There's lots of guides in terms of warm-ups, how to you know execute training in the right way, recovery techniques, psychology tips, preparing for race day, dealing with nerves before sessions or even race day. You can check that out. But as always, take care, be really kind to yourself, run-ins. Yeah, it has its moments, it is awesome, but it can definitely be tough on the psychology and just look after yourself. So take care, thanks for watching. Oh, like, subscribe, do all those lovely things that I keep forgetting about at the start of the video, but take care.